choosing your topic. There are three major considerations when you're choosing your topic. Um, one we're going to talk about quite extensively a little bit later. Um, that is your application persona. This is something that we at Ingenious hark on a lot because it's really important and really helps govern the way you formulate your application strategy overall. So it is worth considering. And again, we'll talk a little bit about what that means in a minute. Um, you also want to consider your competition. Like how are you, how would your essay position you as a student next to the types of people that you're being read next to and your audience. That is who's reading this thing. Keep in mind that this is an admissions office. This is not your teacher. This is not me. This is not your friend or your parents, right? This is your an admissions office. And, and what are they looking for um, in your, your essay specifically, but your application overall? All right. So consideration number one, your application persona. So if the admissions committee is going to remember your application at all, they basically need to be able to summarize what distinguishes you in like a handful of words, right? There are going to be kind of aspects of you, usually three-ish, that kind of are your major talking points, right? They're the things you want them to remember about you. They're the things that distinguish you from others. And you want to cultivate this, not just in your essays, although that's a very useful place to do it, but in your applications overall, your activities list, your honors list, your transcript, your letters of recommendation, all of these go into kind of building what we call a persona. Um, so a good example of this, um, you want um, something that is unique, if you look around you and, you know, your persona, as you've articulated it, could apply to a handful of other people in your high school, it's not unique, right? You want something that's unique to you, um, something that that particular cluster of, of things might not be 100% unique, but is going to be notable to you and will help you structure your application. It also, like, really needs to be you. Like, you can't make up a fantasy version of yourself and then try to sell that because that's not only inauthentic and ethically dubious, it's also just fake and it's going to read as fake. So it needs to feel genuine. Like these need to be genuine parts of you and things that you genuinely care about. Um, it also needs to be catchy and memorable, right? So examples might include the curly haired girl, which I swear is not me, right? The curly haired girl or the right along kid. Right. Like these are things that they might be able to like mention that guy, that guy. Right. Like um, they're not necessarily going to remember all of the names of everybody, but they're going to remember the things about you that are unique and that catch their eye in the application in the first place. Those are the things you're looking for for your persona. So here's a here's an example. This is Maya. We work with her a while. She's actually like, she'll be graduating next year, which is absurd. Um, but she uh, her persona, we kind of she worked with her team and came up with the relentless scientific researcher who wants to empower young women in the field. Right. So science and empowering young women. Those are kind of the two key parts to her persona. And you see that her activities back it up. She's a two-time finalist and fourth place winner at the Intel Science Fair. She's got over a thousand, over 1,600 hours into the pathway, Yale Pathways of Science program, right? She works at science museums. She publishes articles about agricultural engineering, right? She has the body of stuff to back it up for a four years she's been doing this. So it makes sense with her activities. Um, and she demonstrated this, this aspect of her in the personal statement. Um, you can kind of see she talks about, you know, cutting her half-cut water bottle and placing it on a plastic cup and making this homemade reactor, right? And then she shows students that developing a passion for science doesn't require fancy tools. Like she, she's both this teacher to empower others, but also this person who's just scrappy and doesn't like hear no. So she uses her personal statement to reinforce her application persona in indirect but meaningful ways. Um, here's another example. Um, this is Amber. Um, her persona is a charismatic leader with a passion for helping others heal through drama. So you kind of have three pieces here, right? She's got the leadership. So you would expect that to be visible in other parts of her application. The, the kind of helping others and community engagement to help heal in particular and the drama and theater component. And you see, again, 
all of this stuff kind of shows up in her activities between the drama club and the psychology club and vocal competitions, band, actress. You see the, her leadership and the vice president of the student body. So you can kind of see all of these things kind of building up. And she also shows this in her personal statement. Um, she talks about you know, uh, sitting on stage after a performance and letting the lights kind of fill in the blanks and kind of seeing how the audience loved it. And that her mother kind of had refused to let her see a therapist and her mind raced for a more plausible palliative. So she got her friend to join this drama group as a way to kind of address a gap in what she considered her kind of health, mental and, and psychological health. So you can kind of see all of those pieces of her persona showing up in the story she chooses to tell in her personal statement. All right, the, um, the consideration number two, again, your competition. There are a couple of key questions. Is your topic too common? Like, are you, like, are you telling me about how you were scared at your first debate competition, but you got over it and did well? Duh, boring, right? Everybody who does debate has that moment and a lot of people do debate. So you don't want a topic that's too common, even if it's very true and was very meaningful to you when it happened. Um, it will just like your reader's eyes will just glaze over and you can almost watch it happen, right? So you wanna pick something that is particular and unique and eye-catching and memorable. Um, will the admissions officer see hundreds of essays like it if they will at best, it's neutral, but usually it's not only a missed opportunity, it's kind of a, ah, oh, this isn't, this is kids boring, right? And you don't want them to think that about you ever. So you wanna make sure that your kind of writing gets to show the best and most interesting parts of who you are. And how will your essay topic stand out? Like what have you chosen to do to help you stand out among all of the other people? Um, this is a tricky little chart. I never fully know what to say about this chart because it can, this is a kind of classic case and like interpretation is everything, right? So this is a list of a kind of charting the frequency of different types of topics. And there are two takeaways you can get from this and both are equally true, which makes it almost useless, but interesting still. So you want to avoid topics that are too common. So you want to rethink or at least find a fresh perspective on the topics that appear at the far left of this chart. However, there are topics that no one chooses because they are dangerous topics and should be avoided. And those tend to fall at the far right. So just because the topic is weird and unusual doesn't necessarily make it a strong topic. So you wanna kind of find the sweet spot, right? Of something, a fresh perspective on a typical topic, or a unique topic that's maybe not what others are doing, um, but avoiding the ones that everyone avoids because it's a bad idea, right? So again, it's useful and interesting to look at, but the conclusions you're able to draw from this particular data are always a little bit difficult to tell, um, but kind of worth looking at just to see what other people are doing. Um, as you see, the next slide shows you the top four or top three um, for students admitted to the top 10 universities, a formative experience, extracurricular activities and overcoming a challenge. Um, again, none of, the, none of those sound particularly interesting in and of themselves as a category. It's all about the perspective and the takeaway that you have. So bringing that complexity, bringing that nuance and that kind of fresh and particular perspective is essential no matter what you pick. Um, all right, and then the third consideration is your audience. Um, your goal, and this is for your whole application, but the personal statement is the most consistent and reliable place to do this. Your goal is to create a personal connection with your reader. You wanna be careful not to offend or bore them, um, and you don't wanna give them a reason to worry about you, such as like, like, are you unstable? Like, you know, are you gonna be able to, are they gonna have the resources for you if you have mental health issues? Like some schools, like, again, they're not supposed to, but like, if a school knows it doesn't have the resources, they might think twice about admitting someone with kind of mental health concerns because they want to make sure that if admitted, you'd have the help you need. Um, same thing with extreme political views, not that you get the help you need, although hopefully that's true too, but, um, 
if, you know, the, you don't, you don't want to alienate them in that way. But the other thing about this, but the other side of this is you want them to like you, right? Like you want to be, a, they, you want to, them to think of you as a person that they'd want to meet, that they'd want to have coffee with, that they'd want to invite on campus. Um, all right. So back up one. All right. There we go. Thank you. All right. So again, this is again students admitted to top universities. These are less than five percent get admitted with social, political, or religious opinions, historical events or figures, which tend to be just really impersonal and about other people. So kind of not about you. Um, and personal regrets. Again, regrets or things that you've reconsidered can be very show maturity, but if all you talk about is the way you regret, 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 and don't have a good outcome on the end of that, that's rough. It's just tricky. So a few people do it who would get it admitted to these top schools. So kind of keep that in mind. Again, less than 5% do, but they get admitted. You know, some people do. So it's about your approach. It's about your tactics. Choose what's right for you and the story you need to tell. All right, so your takeaway. Um, Again, you have just over a page to introduce yourself, connect with and impress an admissions office and tie your application together, basically to give it a voice, all the while demonstrating exceptional writing skills. It's a lot, um, but it's the task of the personal statement. Um, so if it's done well, again, it gives voice and life and personality to the rest of your application. And they can read these other places that have your accomplishments and your engagement and your activities and your leadership. And they can kind of hear that person from the personal statement in their heads. And they can see that unique person in the rest of your application. That's your goal. Um, so if you can do that, your personal statement is doing its job really, really well.